This video is brought to you by Lubramatic. Quality lubricants and lubrication equipment are the only things we make, so we make them better. Our equipment is made in America and warranted for life. Everything moves better with Lubramatic. Madge, come on in here. What you got, Harry? The mailman just dropped off our new In Fisherman video. Well, let her rip. It's rolling already. Hurry up, you're gonna miss it. The crappie has been called a fish for all seasons. A fish for almost everyone. Indeed, anyone can fish for crappies. Be it a bank fisherman with a $10 cane pole, or a fisherman driving a $25,000 bass boat. Boy, that's sure a fancy boat. Rainbow trout may be more beautiful. Well, ain't that pretty. Muskies, larger and more powerful. Now there's a big splash. And bass, surely more acrobatic. Look at that, would ya? Yet in pits, ponds, rivers, reservoirs, Man, and natural lakes, crappie. crappies win popularity contests going away. Look at those crappies, Harry. I declare, Madge, that sure looks like fun. How come we don't do that anymore, Harry? There's a lot of things we don't do anymore, Madge. Oh, for goodness sakes. Everybody, I'm Dan Sura, and welcome to In Fisherman's User-Friendly Guide for Understanding, Locating, and Catching Big Crappies. You bet big crappies are fun to catch. They put up a fine tussle, especially on light tackle. And of course, they taste great. A fish that likes to bite, fights well, and tastes good too, is bound to be popular. Yet in spite of widespread interest, crappies aren't well understood by most anglers. Indeed, in some waters, during some seasons, the fish remains a complete mystery. Finding the rascals can be tough, and to find crappies consistently, you must understand what makes them tick. Let's begin with a few facts about crappies. Like most fish, crappies are at once both a predator and prey. While the predator crappie is munching on zooplankton, phytoplankton, insects, and minnows, the prey crappie may be munched on by big pike or bass. These facts influence crappie location and size. In general, young crappies consume zooplankton, phytoplankton, and insects, and as adults, they must switch to a minnow diet at some point to reach slab size. Hey, to grow some real shoulders, crappies must have the proper prey base. In addition, crappies need proper spawning habitat, nursery areas for young fish, and living areas for adult fish. Available prey, water quality, competing species and fishing pressure, plus other factors directly affect crappie's survival and growth. Interestingly, fishery studies indicate that lifespans and growth rates vary. For example, in some waters, crappies only live three years, but in others, they may live eight years or more. Growth rates vary too. A four-year-old crappie might measure seven inches in one lake and more than 12 inches in another. Biologists know many factors, but are trying to solve this puzzle and isolate specific things that affect longevity and growth rate. Crappies use the environmental options available to them, and these may vary depending on the body of water. By applying what you know about the crappie's nature, you can find key areas. With experience, you'll begin to understand how each body of water functions and what covers available, which predator-prey relationships exist. Bottom line is, it's easy and you'll catch more fish. Consider some of the physical characteristics of the crappie. Let me show you what I mean from a fish's eye view. Gee, I wonder where I'm at in the food chain now. Well, as long as I'm here, let's take a close look at the crappie. The crappie's body construction is an exercise in moderation. Its flat, relatively compact body allows it to make quick responsive turns and function in and around weeds and brush. In addition, its moderately sleek head to tail design allows it to make successful, however limited use of open water areas. You know, interestingly, crappies, much like bass, are ambush predators only when at rest or in a neutral or negative feeding attitude. When aggressively feeding, crappies are efficient hunters. 
And when do they feed? Well, crappies are light sensitive critters and in clear bodies of water, they often bite best during twilight hours, after dark, or in deeper water during midday. In stained or dark lakes, crappies often bite consistently in shallower water right through midday. However, even on these lakes, look for a period of twilight activity. Changing levels of light intensity often trigger crappie activity. Here's an interesting tendency. Crappies often feed up better than down. They see forage in baits best that are parallel with or above eye level. Take a look at where and how the eyeballs and old paper lips are positioned. Pretty well up and forward on the face, wouldn't you say? Actually, most predators have their eyes set topside and forward. The result is a tendency to feed up. Folks, crappies use their lateral line and inner ear to sense both predators and prey. Fact is, crappies can hear and are disturbed by unnatural threatening noises. Rule of thumb, be extremely quiet when working a school of slab crappies or they could disappear in a heartbeat. Hey, where are you going, fellas? Listen, I'm out of here too. On many lakes, crappies suspend at various depths to feed on the drifting masses of zooplankton or microscopic animals and minnows. Similarly, crappies often suspend in reservoirs and feed on young shad that inhabit the open water areas. The depth at which zooplankton suspend often is controlled by both light intensity and defensive movements. Some zooplankton, like Daphnia, which are water fleas, often migrate vertically in response to changing light levels. Daphnia rise when it's dark and descend when it's light. Others, like copepods, depend on darting evasive action to escape predators. Crappies make major locational changes during the day in response to zooplankton movement. Thus, they follow their prey on a daily as well as a seasonal basis. Bottom line is, you understand that, you're going to catch more fish. There are two distinct crappie species, the black and the white. Additionally, in waters where both species are present, hybrids sometimes occur. As you can see from their range, crappies are widely distributed throughout North America. While the behavior of the crappie cousins may be somewhat different, a tendency to school is common. Crappies are gregarious, and the schooling tendency means superfishing once crappies are located, and as you'll see, it's not that difficult. To help you understand crappie location throughout the year and how to fish for them, we've asked the Inn Fisherman staff members to give you some hands-on help. These guys don't need an excuse to go fishing, believe me. The result is a series of vignettes that detail crappie behavior from season to season, and you'll get plenty of tips on how to catch them too. The first stop on our journey finds Inn Fisherman Director Al Lindner, along with Inn Fisherman Researcher Tom Newstrom, fishing a bay near a feeder stream shortly after ice out. As a matter of fact, the main lake still has ice on it. Let's get a lesson on how to fish pre-spawn slabs. You got one? You know, everybody has got their favorite fish. Mine is smallmouth bass. Yours might be a walleye steelhead largemouth. But I'll tell you what. When you're catching big crappies like this, I've never seen any species-specific fanatic not get excited. Crappies are America's most sought-after fish. Those are beauties, aren't they? Steelhead fishermen, musky fishermen, tournament bass fishermen. In spring of the year, when these crappies really start biting, they're worth going after. Right, Tom? I love them. Me and Tom Newstrom are doing some early season crappie fishing. In fact, the lake behind us still got some ice in it. What we'd like to do is show you some tricks that we've learned through the years from a lot of good fishermen that we think will help you catch a lot more and bigger crappies, especially early in the season. You know, no matter where you fish in the country for crappies, I believe early in the year there's only one way to go for them, and that's with a jig. There's times you have to tip the jig with a minnow if they're real slow, real touchy, and this happens a lot early in the season like this. Or if they're really popping it, you can check it out and they'll hit a jig plain. But there's no question about it. You just a jig and a minnow will catch crappies for you north, south, east, or west at this time of the year. That's, a pretty one. that's more like it. Oh, those afternoon crappies, I'll tell you, I love them. Just love them. I had pretty fish. Let's 
getting a little better. That's a better fish. You bet. She's full of eggs, just full of them. I'll let her go. Here she comes. It's a pretty good one. I'll tell you what, folks. When you're crapping fish, the rod, see how soft this rod is before I lift that dude in? See the play that's in here? You want a rod that has some play in it. You don't want a real stiff graphite rod. The crappie's got a real soft mouth. And they're that paper thin mouth in some areas. And a lot of guys are in here with real stiff sticks and they're just ripping lips. And they're not hooking the amount of fish that they should, should hook. And uh, rod length, somewhere between five and six foot. It's your choice. But you want the rod to bend all the way back in. See how this is almost in a perfect U? It's an ideal crappie rod. Another thing in equipment, and again, I don't care where you're fishing, ri rivers, reservoirs, or wherever you got crappies. Ultralight rod like this, little tiny reel, and all you really need is four pound test line. You don't need six, you don't need eight when you're fishing open water. You'll catch way more with four, and in some cases, two. I don't care where you're at, stay with four. The most ideal condition you got. Crappies are just like largemouth bass this time of year. The shallow, dark bottom bays of the north ends of lakes warm up the quickest where the sun exposes it the most, and that's the ticket to good hot fishing at this time of the year. In many cases during early spring, crappies will be close to their spawning areas. The key to their location is available forage, usually minnows. Often minnows will move into wind-sheltered bays or canals because these are the first to warm and produce small organisms. Crappies will be right behind, feeding heavily. Sharp winds or cold front conditions can move them back out to deeper water. When looking for pre-spawn crappies, don't overlook the mouths of bays or other semi-deep staging areas as well. The crappies will be where their food is. Big enough when, when you got a net crappies, you know they're good, huh? Just short of netters. When you can grab a crappie by the lip and hold them up, they're getting to be good fish in anybody's book. You know, color definitely makes a difference when you're fishing crappies too. Crappies can be real color conscious. You mix and match some colors depending on light conditions. We, we got cloud cover intermittent with sun. Let me show you some things that we had used or learned as far as color goes that'll help you pick the right color for the conditions you're faced with. Here are some general rules of thumb on color. In clear water, that is four foot visibility and more, solid colors work best, such as white, pink, black, or blue. In stained or dirty water conditions, phosphorescent, orange, chartreuse, two tones, and metal flakes are the most effective. What are nice fish y'all, aren't they? Nice size. There's a lot of little tricks in color change. Sometimes you gotta change a color three, sometimes four times a day, depending on the light conditions. But those little little tricks really can make a big difference. Those fish are stacked in here pretty good, Tom, on that little dip. You know, at this time of the year, folks, I can't overemphasize when the water is real cold like this, the importance of using a bobber on these jigs. Not free casting with it, or casting a jig spinner, or a, a spinner like a road runner, or a standard jig and minnow where you're making a lot of cast fishing vertically and horizontally. What you want to do is lay that bobber out there, and these fish are not active. They won't chase. It just kind of sits there, and those crappies will come up and look and look and look at it and finally just come up and pick one up. Remember, we're fishing extremely cold water, low 40s, high 30s. Uh, another month and a half, or another month, they'll get real active and chase different kind of baits. Calls for a different technique. Bobber fishing now is the key. Oh, I'm gonna swing back around and get where you had that first time. Uh, Hard for me to hold a good spot. Ooh, another nice one. Got it. It's a little further out there. Nice one. You know, folks, 
folks, when those fish are hitting like this, it's easy to, to load up real quick, but I'll tell you what has been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. You can over harvest crappies, just like it can happen in largemouth bass, muskies, lake trout, all species of fish. They proved it in a lot of southern reservoirs. Keep some, they're good to eat. Put a few back. You know something, folks? After all these years, old Al still loves catching crappies as much as anything else. Now, crappies shift location as they approach spawning, and the methods for taking them change too. In Fisherman Editor-in-Chief, Doug Stange and his son Nate have located crappies that are spawning and are stalking them quietly in clear, relatively shallow water. Let's join them now. See what the temperature is? Yeah, 67.8. That's the perfect temperature. You know, back in the bay, it's a lot warmer, but out here in the main lake, a little bit cooler. And those crappies start to come into these reed banks like we got here at about that temperature, maybe 65 degrees. So, you never know, they might be in here. So you put your glasses on, because we've got to be able to see these fish. Let's see, is this my hat or yours? It must be yours. Okay, show you how to do this. Got the drag set on there, Nate? I don't know. Here, I'll show you how to test it. You just take it like this, give it a little pull. All you want it to come out, just come out. That's perfect. Now what you're going to be doing is you're going to put your finger on the line like that, and when we see a fish, you're going to flip it like that, and not let it sink too fast, and then just barely move it and watch for the fish, and you'll see what the fish is actually doing. And sometimes it'll be bent over reeds, and if you can get that lure over the bent over reed and then just jiggle it up and down, and there's a crappie there, he'll come and get it. And we're not quite to the reeds yet. And what, we only got one problem, well really two problems today. We don't really have enough sun up yet. That makes it harder to see the fish. And the other thing is, is we got a little bit too much chop in the water. That also makes it hard. You want real nice, flat, calm day for this kind of fishing. But we'll see what, we'll see what's going on in these reeds. Where is he? I can't see him. He's right there. Where is he? Get him, Nate. Yeah, boy, Nate. Okay, keep him in the water. Don't get him up too high. Too light. Oh no, it's not too light. You just gotta handle him right now. Kneel down. Kneel down. Okay, now you gotta lip him. Now you want me to help? I got you. Lift him. Don't lift him up. There he goes. No, 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 no. You're going to break the line. Did you get him? Yep. Oh, let's see. Whoa, that's a pound and a quarter, pound and a half crappie, Nate. That's a trophy. Holy smokes. Jeez. You didn't believe old dad, did you? No. Well, your dad is one of the best fishermen in the whole world. You know that, right? On a typical lake, crappies have several spawning options. Remember, though, that the water doesn't warm at the same rate in all lake areas. And as a result, spawning activity may spread over a month in different lake areas, even though it may take only a week in one individual area. Canals usually are the first areas to attract crappies. Sheltered water warms quickly and attracts minnows that attract the crappies. If the bottom's firm enough and not too deep, crappies may remain to spawn there. Bays usually are the second option for crappies. Look for the most sheltered bays to attract the first waves of fish and bays on the north side of the lake usually warm the fastest. Again, the first priority of crappies will be to feed, but if the bottom's firm, crappies may also spawn in bays. A bit later, main lake reed beds growing on sand, marl, or gravel are going to attract crappies. The reed stalks provide cover that allows the crappies to remain shallow while they spawn. And finally, in a few lakes, main lake humps with a bit of emergent weed cover may attract spawning fish. As you see, spawning is a progressive process. The key to finding crappies is to determine which options exist and when crappies will be using them. The water temperature here has not changed yet. And I don't want you to get the wrong idea about water temperature. That's not the total key to catching fish. But what you do is you use, there's one. Whoa! Like I was saying, Jeez. you want to, well, you go ahead and grab them. Okay. Just right by the lip. He's not really big enough. I could probably put him in the boat. Anymore. There you go. Whew. Now, like I was saying, Nate, water temperature isn't the absolute thing that you're after. But what you can do, folks, is you can use water temperature as a guide to what the fish should be doing or where they should be. 
and again you also have to remember that water temperature is going to be different at different times uh, throughout the spring in different spots in the lake so back bays canals going to warm up sooner in there and then after that you're going to have action farther out in the main lake like we have now so some fish have already spawned by the time we're catching fish out here first we're going to move down along the base of the reeds along the edge and then we're going to move around the top and then we'll come right back through the middle of the patch looking for fish so we should be looking over here right now. Whoa, that one! I didn't even see one over there. Wait. Oh yeah, that's it, that's it. Whoa, big fish Jeez. name! Nice. Oh, whoa, whoa! That's bigger than the other one. Here, like this, quick. Let some drag out. Okay, I'll handle the rod. You get, you got to lift him. I can't lift him in the boat. He's, he's too big. Get him. Yeah! Oh man, look how big and black he is. Huh? Sheesh. You know what that, when they're that black, you know what that means? What? When they come into the reeds and they've been in the reeds for a while and they're ready to start to spawn or they're going to spawn, then they turn real dark like that. So that means he's been up here in the reeds for a while. You know, the, the water temperature is about 68 degrees and those fish usually start coming in about 65. So there's some of these fish actually spawning. I think we better let this big guy go then, don't you think? Boy, that's a trophy, I tell you. Huh? Yeah. So how big do you think he was? Two, five, no, two pounds. Two pounds? Three. Well, three? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say he was a pound and a quarter, but that's a big one. Whoa. Okay, watch out. I'm going to flip right in the boat. Ooh. All right. I got a trophy. Look how dark. Mine is compared to yours. Flip, him in, flip him in the boat. Double header. You don't have to lift him. He's not so big. Yep. Yeah, well, mine's bigger, but that's not a big deal, is it? <laughs> now, the thing about, now I know you keep putting that bait on there, but I'm going to tell you something. That bait really doesn't make any difference. You think it does? <laughs> huh? Yeah. See, these guys are so aggressive that whatever they see, they're going to eat. There's a lot of things that you could be using in catching these crappies, but what you want to do, in other words, you could be using live bait, for example. But the important thing, Nate, is just to have a bait that you can fish efficiently, that you can flip out and move back and forth right in the fish's face, and I think that you can't beat, in that instance, a lead head jig. And you really don't have to tip it. You're going to keep fishing the shrimps? Yep. The little grass shrimps? Yep. And you know that doesn't make any difference, all right? No, no. You think it does? Yeah, I think it gives more taste to it. <laughs> But who's catching more fish? Huh? Me. Whoa. What, another one? Yeah. Whoa, hey, that's a good one. Right, bring him up. No, no, don't horse him, don't horse him. That's a big fish, man. Let's get him up on the surface. Holy smokes. Okay, you gotta get down there. Oh, I got him. Oh, he snapped my line. No, did he really? Yes. Neat, that was a big fish. I think that was the second biggest one of the day. You know, now what's going to happen, another day or two and the temperature is probably going to raise to 68, 70, you know, 68 to 70 degrees and those fish are going to start coming out of these reed beds and after they're done spawning, then they're going to be moved back off the edge again. Now, remember last summer where we were fishing? Where you'd yeah. see all the cabbage up around the edge of the weeds and then we hold off of the cabbage and cast up in there? Yeah. Well, another two weeks, certainly another two weeks, maybe another week, that's what we're going to have to be doing. So we're in kind of the end of the spawning period and we're going to move into a transition period. But I think we've got some more fish to catch today. Yeah. Now once you've found crappies that are about to spawn, you still have to catch them. Several general approaches work well whether crappies are in canals, bays, reed beds, or on the main lake humps. Canals and bays can be fished from shore or from a boat, but you gotta be quiet. Often the fish hold near the surface during prime time on warm, calm days. These fish can really be spooky. In canals, check the back ends of the canals first. 
These areas often have the warmest water and the most active crappies. But you gotta look for cover, stick ups, brush, maybe dock poles, anything crappies can relate to. Then pitch a tiny jig, say about a 132nd ouncer, suspended a foot or two below a small float, just beyond the holding area of the fish. Move the float a foot and let it set. Move it again and let it set again. Crappies will take the jig as it settles back below the float. The same approach works in bays, although sometimes crappies pull back away from the shoreline and hold in deeper water within the bay. So you may need to use a slip float to suspend a jig at the right depth for these fish. But when the weather's fine, look for the fish near shallow cover and often near shore. Main lake reed beds usually require a boat. Work quietly into the wind so you don't blow through the weed bed and spook the fish. If you get to a spot that you want to fish very thoroughly, quietly drop the anchor on a short rope. Fish the area and then use your trolling motor to move forward a bit. Pick off fish as you go, first around the edge of the bed and then into the center of the bed. A plain jig usually does it. No need for a bobber. No need for a minnow either. For crappies holding on main lake humps, stick with the slip float. Experiment with proper depth for the lead head jig. Anchoring will let you fish very, very thoroughly. I prefer to use a six foot long light action rod and a matching reel loaded with about four pound test line for most situations. Now on heavy cover on the other hand you may need to switch to six or eight pound test line just to get the fish out of the cover. Boy, that's a lot of fun. Shallow water crappies. In fact, I love catching them the old fashioned way on a cane pole. Somebody's always building a better mouse trap and you know something, I'm the first guy in line to buy one. New cane poles are absolutely great. After spawning, perhaps a week or two later, the fish shift into another pattern. Deeper in the lake, near the first drop off, usually right at the weed edge. The fish often concentrate on key spots. And despite the fact that many anglers quit pursuing crappies at this time, it can be one of the hottest patterns of the year. Al Lindner and his nephew James are hot on the trail of crappies during early summer. You guys got a double? They got a double! Oh, look at this, right here, big crappie. Boy, you don't mind if I get in here, guys, and try to catch I'm not going to stay here real long on your hole here. But I'll tell you what, folks. See those young guys over there, we're kind of using them as our, our marker. When they're catching double headers, and Jimmy got another one, look at how nice, look at how nice those crappies are. That's what happens when, you, when these fish come out on these summer peaks like this. They really get the bunch in real key. I'm going to let you guys fish this hole and we'll keep fishing down, okay? Boy, he's got a nice one. Look at his fish. I love it. I love it. You don't care who you are, musky nut, bass tournament fisherman, walleye pro, when you start catching crappies like this in heavy numbers, heavy numbers, it's exciting. Everybody loves to catch crappies. Ooh, you got another one? Throwing water. Crappy there thinks he's a smallmouth. These fish are on in a big way. Look at that force. <laughs> Another. Oh, I love that, James. These are crappies that look like bass. This time of the year, crappie fishing, I think, is as good as it gets. I love catching them out on these deeper water edges like this more than early in the season up in the channels and bays and that. Depending on the kind of water you're fishing, these crappies, two, three weeks after spawn, sometimes a month, they'll gather out, just stack like cordwood, out on the first major drop off or the first major edge. In this particular area that me and Jimmy are fishing now, it's a natural lake with a weed line edge. Uh, if you're in a reservoir, it's the first drop off that could be a creek channel edge. You might be in uh, a pond or a little pit. And the first edge might be just a rim of lily pads, but it's the first area that has a drop off on it. Missed them. You got one now? But in some cases, the crappies where you don't have that cover, they do some suspending, don't they? Yep, that's right, Jim. In cases where there's not an abundance of obvious cover, such as weeds or wood, concentrations of crappies will often suspend just off the first major drop off in deep water. I believe the school will wait for the majority of its members to spawn before moving on. They use these edges to feed from while the school reorganizes. An awareness of these collecting areas that we refer to as pivot points can provide you with some of the hottest crappie action of the year. 
some of the uh, the best areas of drop off are wherever you get the weed growth naturally where it's fairly thick but you want it on the sharpest drop off where you got weed growth in a long flat don't work it's, it's got to be where you got a, a real good drop like we're sitting on right here where you got a little bit of a wall pushing them in there <laughs> otherwise you could get the fish will scatter a lot now they'll scatter up and down but they'll stack in on these tighter weed line drop offs like this line watching is really critical a lot of times you watch your line and all of a sudden you'll see the line all of a sudden it'll snap <laughs> when you catch grapples like this every single cast it gets to be a real rush <laughs> our experience at this time of the year is that you're better off way better in fact when he's fishing around these drop-offs fishing without a bobber you want to be able to cover there at a lot of different levels on that ledge. Some fish will be high in the weeds and some will be down at the base of the weeds. So you want to be able to fish as vertical and as horizontal as you have to. If you're fishing with a bobber, you're restricted. Spring of the year, it's a plus. This time of the year, it isn't. <laughs> rods we're using is just five and a half foot ultralight four to six pound test pretty soft action you want something that's you know they got pretty tender lips you, know, you get too stiff of a rod and you'll end up ripping the hooks out of their mouth you're going to be fishing four pound test line most of the time and once in a while if you're in heavy cover or in a reservoir with a lot of wood you might want to go to six or on occasion eight but you don't have to go much longer than that seven footer one thing about it, like a seven foot rod, you can cast those light jigs quite a distance. It sort of helps when you're throwing 16th or 30 seconds on those jigs. A little bit of length can help. Oh no, he just came off. Look at that, he ripped my little power tube, power curly tail. One thing about your crappie box, this is it, this is my whole crappie box. It's not like going walleye fishing or for bass fishing where I have three, four, five boxes with me. Everything I need is in here to go anywhere in the country to fish crappies any time of the year. Day in and day out. Little curly tail and a tube for this situation where you're casting, fishing the fish vertically and horizontally on a cast are the best baits. Spring of the year when you're fishing below a bobber, it's a different story. Oh, crappies, one of my favorite fish. Well, what is this? Yeah, it's a, it's a crappie. I thought I had a bass for a second. You know, folks, in a little while, this bite like this, where these fish are on that first major drop-off like cordwood, this kind of bite will last, oh, uh, two weeks to a month, depending on where you're at in the country. And then it takes a change. One of the interesting little bits of information that's included in the In Fisherman Crappie Wisdom Book is something called the 12 to 22 crappie zone. And on many, many lakes and reservoirs during summer that have moderately deep depths, you can look for crappie suspended at 12 to 22 feet. That and lots more information is included in the Crappie Wisdom book. If you want to be a slab crappie catcher, this book will help you get on the right track. That's the whole key to catching open water suspended crappies in the summertime. A lot of people know how to catch them up shallow in the springtime when they're up in brush and weeds, and shallow visible cover. But in the summer, it's a little bit of a mystery. They go out, they suspend 
in some of the deeper water in the lake. And if, with just a few simple little tips, like Dan Craven and I are going to show you today, you can go out and catch big open water crappies all summer long. The whole key to catching crappies in the summertime is working the open water adjacent to structural elements. The crappies aren't necessarily going to be penetrated up in the weeds or into the face of heavy timber. They often school up and swim alongside these areas, alongside classic points or sunken islands, uh, in a reservoir alongside of the timber line, for instance. Uh, the fish often also suspend. They're not necessarily on the bottom. And one of the best ways to work that situation is with a tiny little jig, four pound test line, and a swimming retrieve. And that'll be pretty much the key to everything we're going to do today. I'm marking a few fish here, Dave. They seem to be six to ten feet down, right about in there. Seems like, seems like they're always a little bit farther out during midday like this. During the evening, they'll be right up on the weed edge, possibly, but midday like this, they pull out about a cast distance from shore and suspend anywhere from six to 15 feet down over deeper water. How deep is the bottom then? Oh, well, right now the boat's sitting in 20 feet, and it seems like they like to have a little bit of depth there to suspend over during midday. Since the crappies may be suspended as little as six or eight feet beneath the surface, we don't necessarily want to troll right over their heads. So we're going to use a casting presentation, and I'm going to use a little white grub. 16th ounce light-colored grub uh, imitates the light-colored minnow forage that crappies feed on. And I'm going to cast and swim it back. And basically that means I'm going to cast out to the approximate location of the fish, close the reel, put my finger on the line to sense a sensitive strike, and count 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and just kind of count it down. And we'll experiment with different depth levels. And once I get it to the level I want, we just slowly swim it back like this. Uh, crappies like things slow and subtle and simple. They don't like a lot of hopping and dancing around like this. Keep it nice and simple. Now Dan and I are going to work as a team. One time I might let my jig go out to 6,000 or 7,000. Maybe Dan will go 8,000, 9,000, or 10, just to work different depth levels until we really zero in on the location and the level of active fish. And you'd be surprised. Once we zero in on them, boy, you could start popping them cast after cast. Here's a fish now. That looks pretty crappie-ish to me. Not real big, but decent fish. Uh, the whole key is getting the first one, Dan. Once you find them, you got them. Yeah. That's pretty feral. Yeah, nothing wrong with him. Nice little crappie. So you want to keep a couple for supper? Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. He will eat. Got, got one, Dan. I got one. Pretty oh. close to the boat, too. He was off the weed edge. How far down was he? He was down about eight feet. Oh, that's a little bit better that's crappie. That's a much nicer crappie. That's a better crappie. Damn. Fish, yeah, that's nine. right in that zone where you're a little bit afraid to just lift them over the side. But not quite a big <laughs> enough for the musky net. <laughs> got there you go. That's a nice yeah, fish. That's a pretty nice fish. Look at that. You got him zeroed in now, Dan. Yeah, there's a school right down there. Right on him. Okay. Dave, those fish are in a specific enough location. I'd like to mark them. They're just off that inside turn there. About a cast distance. I'm going to throw a marker right out in that area. I agree. That's always a good idea once you've pinpointed fish. Now, we found these fish with the use of the depth finder. We could actually see how deep they were laying. But if you didn't have a depth finder, you could still do it with trial and error by experimenting, letting your jig fall to different depths, working as a team, and eventually figuring out the orientation of these fish, where they're at, how deep they are. Now, you could theoretically catch crappies all along this edge here, but there are some real prime areas where they tend to congregate. And if you look for these spots, you can at least double and probably even triple your catch. Natural lake crappies often roam the edges of 30 to 40 foot basins during summer, relating to primary structural elements like points, corners, and sunken islands. The fish often patrol the adjacent deep water areas during the day, looking for schools of small minnow forage, and then move up tight to the weed edge in morning and evening. While crappies can be almost anywhere along a weed edge, the highest percentage spots are corners or inside turns in the weeds. 
These act like funnels which collect and concentrate bait fish and crappies. If you check the corner areas extending from the deep weed edge to approximately two casts out over the adjacent open water, you'll be fishing in prime crappie territory. Got them, Dan? Boy, it's amazing. Once you find these guys, it's just bang, bang, bang every cast. I mean, that is the spot on the spot that those crappies were relating to. There he is, Dan. Right where he's supposed to be. Ready to school. You bet. Another pretty decent one. That's decent. A little bit smaller than the last one. What a decent fit. That, that one will risk swinging in. Yeah. Notice that little jig is just about the right size for that crappie. About a two inch, little light colored grub or marabou tail. Wow, he's really hooked. It's perfect for that suction type mouth. It just scoop it right in there. And... Looks good to me. You got one, Dan? Yeah, I've got one. Right this next seems... to the marker. It's a decent fish, too. Oh, yeah. And that's what you gotta like right there. Is that for that guy, or are you gonna handle No, it? I'll take a chance on oh, this man, one. that's a nice fish. Yeah, it is. Real nice crappie. Ooh. I like it when you can lip them like that. That's a nice fish. Okay. What I'm gonna do, Dave, is it's slowed down a little bit on the action tail grub towards midday. It's probably getting towards 90 degrees here. What I'd like to do is try a tube jig. It doesn't have that action tail on it, and that's a little bit more subtle presentation that sometimes works better towards midday. That's a good point. Uh, fish activity not only changes during the course of the day, but their location, the way they orient to these structural pieces can modify a little bit according to the level of the sunlight. Early and late in the day, Crappies tend to suspend near the surface and tighter to the weed edge. Under prime low light conditions, they may even penetrate the edge to feed on minnows. During the day, crappies often drop deeper and move slightly outside structural elements. Here they slowly patrol the open water, searching for schools of minnows. Crappies within the first 20 feet of the surface are catchable with a casting technique. Simply cast a tiny jig across the fish, let it sink to slightly above their level, and swim it back with a minimum of motion. Fish will rise up several feet to strike the jig, but usually ignore lures that pass below them. Shallow humps and rock piles can also be midsummer crappie hotspots, particularly for trophy fish. The tops of the rock should extend shallow enough to receive good sunlight penetration. This promotes algae growth and attracts the tiny minnows which crappies feed upon. Crappies tend to be up on top of the humps in morning and evening, and then drop off the sides during the day. Shallow fish are susceptible to the cast and swim jigging technique. Fish deeper than 20 feet are more effectively worked with a vertical presentation, like back trolling. Now Dan, you fish with kids a lot, and this is a great way to teach them how to catch fish. But if you get in a case where a person isn't real adept at casting with little jigs and light line, how do you handle that situation? What I like to do with kids when they can't cast real well, these light, light lures, I like to get them to cast out, just open their bale, let some line out. They want to be have their lures right towards the edge of the weed line, and as I move the boat forward, troll it forward real slow, it kind of swings that lure out and over that school of fish. The kids are trolling, basically, and the fish come up and nail it. So even though you're actually trolling or control drifting, your lure is still pretty much at or above the level of the fish. That's right, Dave. It drags it right out over the fish, and, and they hit. <laughs> Right on cue, boy. Right on cue is right. That looks right. like a better one, Dan. It is. It's a nice fish. Right by the marker. This right might be the going. nicest fish we've had yet. Ooh, nice fish. Oh, yeah. Nice big slab. Nice big slab. There he is. Nice fish. Nice fish. See, it pays to keep you away from the marker, Dave. Yeah, I noticed we drifted off the spot just enough that I had a hard time getting in there, but you were busy handling that big fish. I don't blame you. Just get me back in there now. Nice crappie, Dave. You know, summertime crappies don't have to be that tough if you just follow those simple set of rules we talked about, about them staying out just a little bit away from the weed line. Nice fish. That should really help solve the old mystery of where do the crappies go in summer? Now you know. As fall rolls around, crappies may again change patterns, 
Autumn can be one of the very best times of the year to find concentrations of active fish. But again, location and presentation may change. Helps to have a few tricks up your sleeve too. Just watch old Dave here. This is looking real good right here, Mark. Yeah, it is. pitch marker up. We ought to be able to pull some crappies out of there. Ooh, look, at look at that. that. That's my kind of spot. Get him. There's a few. Got him. Shutland? Yep. Right away. That's a big one. Yeah, pretty fair. Come on, buddy. Gotcha. Look at that, Mark. Beautiful crappie. I really love my fall crappie fishing. And it's actually very similar to what you do in the summertime with just a little bit of modification. And if you use the few tips, we'll show you. You too can catch great big crappies like these in the fall season. There's one. Ooh. Looks like a decent one. Yeah, right tight to the bottom. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one, huh? Ooh, boy, that hook fell right out on it. Pop that baby in here, Mark. We're going to have that one for supper. You know, and these fish are deep, it, it really works good to have a rod that has a little bit of backbone to it. You know, that has, uh, here we've got a fast tip, but you can see there's a lot of backbone to it. It really helps. It's not really an ultralight rod. It's kind of a, a medium light. During fall, crappies use a lot of the same general areas that they use in the summer. The major difference is that they move a lot deeper. Summer fish tend to suspend 10 to 20 feet down outside of major points or off of sunken islands. But in the fall, after the water cools down, the crappies tend to drop a whole lot tighter to the bottom. And now the major focus of activity becomes that zone within probably zero to five feet from the bottom, often in the 30 to 40 foot range. And because of that, the cast and swim jigging technique that covers shallow water really starts to fail. And you're far better off vertical jigging. Vertical jigging keeps the lure right down in the fish zone. In this case, the crappies are just a couple feet off the bottom, so you keep your finger on the line, and you feel where you can just lift the lure on and off, on and off the bottom. And you can be either right on the bottom, or if you see them on the depth finder and they're just a little bit off, just lift up a little bit. And you keep the jig right at the fish's level or slightly above them. And that's really the best way to try to catch these deep water fish. Slow, subtle, and simple is the best. There he is. Yes, sir, right off the bottom. Got one, Mark? Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> he thinks he's a smallmouth. Look at that. Gotcha. Yeah, they are. These are some beautiful crappies in here. Get that little hair jig up there. Oh man, this is a better one. Look at that. Oh. If people understood that they could catch big crappies like this with this simple jigging technique in deep water, they would be out here by the hordes, boy. Everybody has fun catching fish like that, especially me. <laughs> We're on the Minnesota-Canadian border here, up on Rainy Lake. We're using dead minnows to tip these jigs. Just like that. 
down you go. Now the local regulations don't permit you to bring live minnows across the border from the United States, so we froze our minnows and kept them nice and cold. Uh, I'm just using a little grub here, and while the jig and minnow technique is probably the most appropriate for cold water situations, when the fish are fairly active, you can catch them on just a little plastic tail like this. I got one, Chad. Ooh, there you go. this one. Come on. Fun on light line, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's a nice crappie. This is crappie. Reach down and grab him. Whoa, is this one like? Well, I'm just going to grab him here. All of these are really run nice size. I'll throw him up here too. Fry him up later. Sometimes these guys really thump it, but other times they just kind of sort of hang on, and you have to be real. Ah, there's there's one. He just just touched it. Got him. Got him. Sometimes you can set the hook too fast. One of those heavier ones. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come on. Under the boat. Oh, yeah, look at that. Big crappie. Big crappie. Oh, man, I love that. I would rather do this than just about any other kind of fishing on Earth. That's fun. I tell you, Mark, we got a houseboat full of people to feed, but we've got a houseboat full of fish right there. I don't think we'll keep any more. That should be enough for a good fish ride, Dave. That's a great bunch of fish. Hey, if you'd like to catch some of these great crappies along the Minnesota-Ontario border, just give Rainy Lake Houseboats a call. I guarantee you, you'll have a great time. There you have it, folks, In Fisherman's user-friendly guide to catching crappies during the open water season. Crappie fishing can be as simple or complex as you want it to be. For some anglers, dangling a line in shallow bays during spring is all it takes to have a great time, and it really is. Others are intrigued by the challenge of hunting slabs throughout the year. Crappie fishing is even more fun when you understand the fish and how it must behave. And remember, folks, even though crappies make great eating, and the idea of releasing them is foreign at best, the release of larger fish can help sustain good fishing. Practice selective harvest. By the way, this is a graphite reproduction. The real fish, it's still swimming. Hey, we'll see you on the water. Harry, that was the best show I've seen in years. I hardly took my eyes off the set. Harry. Where are you at? Harry. Oh, that old fool snuck off fishing again and left me here. Edge, if you're coming, you better get on down here now. Don't you leave without me now. Other titles that exist in the In Fisherman video treasury of angling wisdom are In Fisherman Classics. You know, for years you've been hounding us to make our award-winning television shows available in home video form. Well, we're doing that and a whole lot more. The In Fisherman Classics takes you back to the beginning of In Fisherman television and guides you right up to the present. It's a chronicle of events that shape the course of modern angling. There he is, Johnny. The Tactics and Strategy series consists of the same kind of hard-hitting action and entertainment provided by the award-winning television specials while delivering the most in-depth educational how-to fishing ever laid down on video. 
these tapes are guaranteed to set the standard by which all others are judged. The Discovery Year series takes a documentary approach, species-specific, providing you with an expanded view of the foundations of modern freshwater fishing, electronics, fish behavior, structure, precision boat control, a comprehensive look at the factors responsible for bringing lures and rigging design into the modern age of angling. Our travel and adventure series brings you the whens, wheres, and hows concerning the in-fisherman's most exciting field trips. It provides you with material both to fuel your wildest dreams and to more confidently plan your trip of a lifetime. Look at the size of that thing! For more information, write In Fisherman Video, Post Office Box 2676, Brainerd, Minnesota, 56401. Or call the In Fisherman Video Hotline, 1-800-232-4202.